Hello, you're welcome to the Townwood Floor Talk Show where we talk, learn and grow together. And I'm delighted to introduce my guest for today's show, Bosse George Ogan. I love your name, it's so Thank musical, so I love it. <laughs> Great to have you with us today and uh, really looking forward to the conversation. We actually met... Uh, well, actually, we're both walk zesters, by the way. I, you know, I, I will always keep mentioning walk zest because, obviously, as founder and uh, and it's it's a great organisation in terms of what we do. But but we're fellow walk zesters, of course. Um, but what happened was that we were both speaking at uh, an event on the first of May. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Workers' Work Day, Day event, yeah, which is yes. the third one. Actually, I was supposed to be there last year, but I wasn't able to make it. Now I enjoyed your your speech Thank thoroughly. You. And I will refer to that. So that was uh, on the back of that. I thought I've got to have you in here. And of course, uh, the book that you launched as well. Uh, you talked about that, and you, you you brought some of the themes from that. So we will talk about that. But by way of intro, you will probably add some of this yourself. You are a director of strategy funding and stakeholder management at the Lego State Enterprise Trust Fund. Employment Trust Fund. Employment Trust Fund. Okay. All right. Thank you. And. Education-wise, you studied political science uh, here in Nigeria, and you also did an MSc in communications for innovation and development from the University of Reading. I actually did some studies there, oh, so oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're an author, okay, and this is uh, the book, which yeah. is titled Building of Conscious... Building a Conscious Building Career. Building a Conscious Career. How to Build a Fulfilling and Financially Rewarding Career. And I loved some of the things that you talked about at the event on the 1st of May, and we'll, we'll refer to that. You are the founder and chief facilitator of the Women in Leadership Advancement Network, also known as Women in Politics NG. Is that a, a website? So Women in Politics, it's an online platform. Right, okay, yeah. okay, so brilliant. Instagram, yeah. yes. Great, and it's all about improving women's participation in, in politics in Nigeria. Is it, is it really hard? For women to be in politics in oh, absolutely. Yeah. The numbers are bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we just had an event on Thursday, mm. and um, coming out of the 2019 elections, we've actually sort of retrogressed, unfortunately. Out of the 360 um, House of Representative seats, yeah. women only got 11. And out of 109 Senate seats, women only got 7. Wow. And out of the 991 House of Assembly seats across the 36 states, women only got 31. So it's very bad. Why, why do you think there has been a decline compared to the, the little bit of progress that we had that seen we prior to that? Um, so there are a few factors. Um, I, I definitely think culture plays a role. Mm. Um, financial capacity, intellectual and mental capacity, um, as well as you know some other factors that you know we can't even talk about, like violence mm. and bullying. Yeah. things like that. Yeah. So women just stay away from politics because they feel it's a terrain that's you know, already built as a system not to accommodate them. So it's a bit of a men's club, isn't it, here yeah. in Nigeria? Yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, though we progressed, um, just because of all the other things that are happening, especially culture and religion, um, unfortunately we're having to go back and then when the country's not doing well, it means that the number of women who have economic power mm -hmm. sort of reduces, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, we are still doing money politics in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. But how do we compare? How do we compare to other countries in the continent of Africa, in your opinion? So, I mean, <laughs> Rwanda mm -hmm. is um, has the best women's representation in the world, actually, um, and they're at I believe sixty percent. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, we're not doing well. Mm -hmm. We're actually 180 in the world in terms of wow. position in the ranking. Yeah. Um, so we're not doing great. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even think there's a room for comparison because we're at an average of 5.7 percent, um, where we have a national gender policy that says that it, that actually recommends 35 percent wow. um, representation yeah. in politics. Yeah. So we've got a bit of a way to go. A lot. A lot. Yeah. I, I think I, well, I picked something up, up on the BBC, was it last week or the week before? 
I can't remember the African country it was, it doesn't come to mind, but there was something about a female politician being slapped by okay. a male politician. I, what, I, I don't want to get the country wrong, yeah. so I'm not going to mention it. I'm sure you can Google yeah. and find it out. And apparently it had something to do with the fact that uh, there hadn't been enough of an allocation of a budget to his department. Mm. And in an expression of dissatisfaction, can you believe it? This lady was... So that's what we were just talking about. So that's workplace that? violence, right? Yeah. But in the context of wow. political office. And it's totally it unacceptable. Just believe, but it's because we grew up in a patriarchal society. Yeah. And it's very ingrained. Mm. And again, as with all things, reorientation, we have a bit of a yeah. yeah. Because that's just totally unacceptable. Absolutely. Because, I mean, they're... In their capacity, their colleagues, you know. So, on what premise, really? You know, I, I was shocked. It's, I, I, it's I our reality. Been, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> interesting, interesting. And um, and so, yeah, great work that you're doing there. And I also, when I was reading through your profile, there was also something about a tri sector leader. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a term that I, I, at first I thought is that I've been talking about the sort of third. <laughs> Third sector, which yeah, you know is normally the non-profit non non and all of that. But I, I read it again and I googled it. But listen, you explain to us. Explain to the others what does that mean? What is that? Yeah. And how do you do it? Yeah. So, um, the concept of tri-sector leadership is one I think was made popular by the Harvard Business School or Harvard Business Review, and it's this concept that um, leaders who have worked across sectors, and so this is the public sector, private sector, and the not-profit sector. Yeah. definitely bring uh, a very interesting view of mm -hmm. things especially when it comes to development yeah. um, and so if you start to think about the sustainable development goals yeah. and how we're going to achieve those yeah. um, then you're thinking about a group of people who potentially could lead you know in a way that actually leads to us achieving the goals and tri-sector leadership is this concept that people who have worked across sectors like me um, can definitely bring a very yes. perspective that actually helps us to um, leave no one behind, which is like the main mantra of the yes. SDGs. Yeah. Um, and so just because of our views and the fact that we've worked across sectors, we bring a very unique perspective mm. to mm. things. Really interesting. And so how, how well are we doing with tri-sector leadership in Nigeria? How is that working for us? So it's not very common. Um, I mean, there are people who definitely have worked across yeah. sectors. Very popular will be private yeah. sector translating to public sector. Yeah. Um, the reverse is not as common. Mm -hmm. um, there's also non-profit translating into public sector. Again, non-profit to private sector is not as common. Yeah. So you've mm -hmm. got people who might be, you know, maybe uh, double sector leaders, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. but not tri-sector yeah. leadership. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, there, there are few people there, mm -hmm. and the most important thing is that if you've worked across sectors, you have hopefully um, you know, learned and invested in a way that when you are in a certain position of leadership, mm -hmm. you are able to bring those yeah, leverage all of that perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and I guess that was really where I was coming from, where we do have individuals in leadership that have had that experience, how well are they actually leveraging that Absolutely. to truly demonstrate, you know, the concept. Yes, and the value. Of the value of, yes. of that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, listen, let's um, let's go back to, so at the, at the WDD, and I believe maybe what I, I'll do is, first of all, let you explain a little bit about uh, this book, which is actually my copy. <laughs> very Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, you talked a lot about career, and this mm. is a book that you wrote. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Um, there was something that you did at the at the event where you actually did a really interesting, very simple explanation of the categories of, of career. And I think a lot of time we, we rush into and we're busy just trying to find a job to do that we don't kind of take a step back and be a little bit more thoughtful about how we want to proceed with our careers for whatever reason it might be. So this book, if you could talk about that, and also this way that you, you, you help to educate people in understanding what the potential of a breadth of careers would, would actually look like. Awesome, thank you very much. So yeah. um, 
I've been working 15 years, um, and in that time, I've met, you know, people doing amazing things, so impactful work. I've met people who were prospering in the career, what I guess we would typically call a successful career. Yeah. So that means you started, you know, from entry level and successfully got to the peak of that career. Um, but I always found that there was a missing, and then of course, on top of that is the on high unemployment rate that we have in the country. Yeah. And so I currently work for an agency of government who has a clear mandate to create jobs. Um, and in doing that work, and then based on my experience, I realized that, you know, first of all, there are a lot of disgruntled, you know, employees in Nigeria. Entrepreneurship is now a fad, yeah. right? And then there's this huge unemployment challenge where in interacting with the problem, I realized that there's a group of people who genuinely have no business being unemployed. They just don't understand mm -hmm. how to take what they've learned, you know, in terms of maybe knowledge, going to school, or having a skill, yeah. and translating that into value that can lead to wealth, wealth generation yeah. or income generation. Um, so, in trying to address all of those, I really wanted to document my journey, mm -hmm. um, which really describes, the, 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 the title of the book describes, which is A Conscious Career. Yeah. And so my, my story is very simple. At 13, um, I did very well in my junior secondary school, and they asked me to go to a science class, and I said no, because mm -hmm. based on my limited understanding of myself, then I was very social, I liked people a lot, I was in a dance group, and I just thought, I would be better suited in an art class. And so I went to art class and graduated again, you know, tops in history and government. And so it kind of validated that I was pro probably better skewed towards the arts. Um, and then when it was time to go to uni, at the time, of course, the most prestigious art course is law. Um, but I insisted that I wanted to do international relations yeah. because at 16 I was saying I want to make a difference and change the world. And my perception of the person who changes the world at the time was an ambassador, mm -hmm. right? So I, I thought, what does an ambassador study international relations? And so that's kind of what informed that based on my limited knowledge yeah, yeah, at yeah. the time. And then I graduated and found an organization mm -hmm. called Action Aid mm -hmm. um, that had a vision of a world without poverty and a, a mission um, to eradicate the inequities and injustices that cause poverty. And I just thought to myself, our values are aligned. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. So I should work for that organization. And, you know, it kind of went on from there. Very I mean, conscious. Yes. Very conscious. But very people conscious that would now. see me would be like, oh, so Bossa, where are you now? Because I, I, cha I change jobs quite a lot, right? But it was always very clear that mm -hmm. Bossa would be working a job mm -hmm. that impacts people mm -hmm. and makes a difference mm -hmm. in the lives of people. And of course, those jobs paid me. They might not be the highest paying jobs, but the fact that they were taking me exactly where I wanted to go, and I mean, I talk about a career being the vehicle, right? So it's a vehicle that takes you from point A, right, to your destination. Yes, you so I'm very clear about my destination. Yeah. My destination is to be president mm -hmm. of Nigeria. And so um, I'm building a body of work that allows me to eventually get there yeah. and be successful when mm -hmm. I get there and not just get there. Yeah. Um, so what I try to share in the book is the how you do this, right? And it starts with self-awareness, yeah. um, something people don't like to yeah. talk about, but, and you know, it, it starts with passion. Yeah. Things people think are very cliche these days, but unfortunately they're not mm -hmm. because you cannot change who you are. And who you are is who you are, regardless of where you find yourself. So what happens in Nigeria, unfortunately, is the education system is not great. We already we all complain about that. Yeah. So you come through that system, mm -hmm. right? The jobs are not enough for the people. So you find people going and becoming emergency entrepreneurs. Now, you cannot blame them because when we were all growing up as well, they gave us only two options. Yes. It's either you come out and be a paid employee mm -hmm. or you start your own business. And so that's where I start to talk about categories of um, careers. careers. Yeah. Because the truth is, bless our parents and all the people who taught us only two, mm -hmm. but the truth is there are many more. Yeah. Um, and the truth is, in the lifetime on your, of your career, you can actually have different categories that you go through, yeah. right? So of course, the first one is, you can be a paid employee, yeah. right? And I like to use doctors. Let's say, let's use a doctor. So you go through medical school, you come out and you go and work for Bluth, right? You're an employee, so they will pay you, 
right? But if you came out and you had enough capital, for example, to set up a hospital, mm. you're an entrepreneur. Mm. You know, so even though you're going to be paid a salary as part of that business, but because you started the business, you're yeah. an entrepreneur. So yeah. you, that's an entrepreneurial track. But you can also be a volunteer doctor, right? So a doctor who, you know, comes into town, for example, uh, for a period to maybe do surgeries mm -hmm. or whatever, and you get paid. So volunteering could be paid or unpaid, right? But it can be a career. Yeah. There are people whose careers have been volunteering from beginning to yeah. the end. Exactly. You could also be an investor, right? So you've gone through all these other careers. You've made a lot of money. You don't necessarily think you have to do the work, but you want to really... For example, find a cure to, for cancer, yeah. right? And you start to fund, you know, cancer research, or you start a hospital and institution that's mm -hmm. focused on that. So you become an investor, yeah. right? And then also you can be an advocate, mm -hmm. right? So you can say, I mean, there's a lot of injustice in healthcare. Um, I don't think there's access for a certain, you know, um, care of people, yeah. and I want to take that on. Mm -hmm. And then you become an advocate for better uh, access to health care, that's an, a, a career of advocacy, you know, so there are these yeah. different career mm -hmm. categories, mm -hmm. right, that you go through in the lifetime of your career that actually fulfills you, right, but also financially rewards yeah. you, and that's what I really wanted to mm -hmm. document in this book, mm -hmm. and to say, you know, you're different, I'm different, you know, we're wired differently, our passions are different. But the truth is, the earlier you come to know what that is, yeah. the easier it is to maybe skew your, what your course of study or your interests or your work experience, yeah. you know. And the truth is, we will thrive, mm -hmm. right? You thrive when you find it easier to do things. But unfortunately, what you now have is people struggling yeah. because they sort of they're not in things that they enjoy, or so it's 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 like. It's a chore, right? Yeah. To go to work yeah. and they, they feel like they're stressed, you yeah. know, coupled with legal traffic mm. or, or traffic mm. across the world, wherever it is that you work. So I really wanted to let people know that it is possible mm. if you are conscious yeah. to have a fulfilling career and a financially rewarding career yeah. and not just one or the other. Because yeah. what you have a lot of times is people have careers that really genuinely pays them a lot mm. and then they'll say something is missing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or you have people who are doing impactful work yeah. and say, I, I don't have enough. Yeah. Right? But it's the fact that, look, whatever it is that you have, yeah. you, you have to learn how to create value from it mm -hmm. and capture value through it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know great, great stuff right there. I, we were talking about this earlier, and I really do believe with that. You know, there's always this stuff about being happy, being happy at work, being satisfied, etc. Yeah. Et it's all about context, really. Absolutely. And like you said, a career is just a vehicle, mm -hmm. getting you to the destination point of that big aspiration that you have for yourself, which is why and you talked about this at the, um, at the event as well. Understand your why. Yeah. Understand what it is and where it is that you're trying to go to. You also, also talked about self-awareness, that whole emotional intelligence yeah. thing. You need to get it. Because once you understand that kind of stuff, what it does is that it, 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 it makes things clear for you. So that even if you're doing a job, for example, that you may not be passionate about, you know it's not that thing that excites you. But if you understand the role that it plays Absolutely. in the bigger picture of what it is that you're trying to achieve to get you to where you want to go, you will value it. You I, may I not absolutely. love it, yes. but you will value the role that it's playing. And I think it's very important that you should mention that because we need to make it clear that we're not saying it's going to be easy because it's, you know, you're passionate and about you're not going to be skipping to work every month. No, no. However, like you said, the clarity of purpose absolutely. changes your perspective absolutely. as to how you see the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. And it also makes you commit to it, yeah. you know? And then you can grow, you can... You know, I tell people, for example, when you when you want to leave a job, the first thing you don't do is you do is not don't leave. Mm -hmm. You know, find out what the policies of, of that your workplace is. What are the opportunities, right? So, for example, somebody who says um, something is missing, so mm. you're you're getting paid or whatever. Mm. Try volunteering over the weekend. You know, sure. find out if that the interest you have, for example, is something that you really have. Use volunteering to find out. Absolutely. If you wanted to give back, you know, to a cause or you were passionate about a cause, yeah. 
then find an organization, get on their board, for yeah. example, support them, you know, or something like that. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So I agree that there's always a way around these things, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's not that everything's going to be rosy. I don't think that's the sure. point. However, you have to make sure that you are exploring all the opportunities. Mm. And when you're conscious, it does give you perspective in Indeed. a way that looking from the outside in, people are just like, oh my gosh, she's having so much fun. <laughs> just leave it. Very, very much, very much. Uh, lo lovely point, lovely point. And um, I think the other thing as well, uh, so last week, well, we're still in the, the current week actually, and there's been quite a bit in the news about the future of work. Mm. And uh, the fact that I was listening to the BBC and, and, and some other international um, uh, platforms, I guess, and there was a bit about the future of work and how by 2030, 20 million jobs are going to be taken over by robots, you know. And there is this thing about, again, it's still, it's still, leading, it's still about career and all of that and choices that we're making and, and, you know, that thing about how are people needing to think about the kind of work, the kind of even choices of study or whatever it is that they're going to be looking to do now and in the immediate future to be employable or to be uh, able to add value, whatever the case may be. What are the things that people need to be thinking about in their mind um, that will direct the choices that they make about employment, about education? What are your thoughts on that? Because those are some really big statistics and, and, and sort of messages that certainly are scary for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, because most of these jobs are, are, are they would say, are sort of blue collar jobs, you know, factory jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there is a, a, a level of monotony in a lot of things that we do these days. So, how should people be sort of thinking about those things? So, I mean, I, I, I definitely think that technology is a good thing, and yeah. I think we can all agree. Um, yeah. Or rather, it's it's in its use, yeah, right, yeah. Um, but I think what's very important is um, robots cannot connect. So I know the World Economic Forum recently did. So can we pause? Yeah. So what? Yes. Action. So talking about the future of work, I think last week, or no, still in the current week, actually, there's been quite a bit in the, uh, I guess, the public domain about, and I've heard titles like uh, 20 million uh, jobs will go by two th uh, I think 2030 as a result of uh, robots. So robots will take away 20 million jobs by 2030, 2030 yeah. Uh, mainly factory jobs, blue collar jobs, that kind of thing. Um, so that was really fascinating. And so I guess what I'm, what I'm, I, I wanna ask in positioning that is, and we've been talking about career and career categories and, and the choices that people make and you know da 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 and I guess when thinking about employment, thinking about courses of study, thinking about how one needs to be prepared for the wave of change that is coming and is here already, what are the things that you advise or you encourage people to think about in, in how they go about making choices or just really managing all this information and these statistics that are coming through. Yeah. What, what do you say? Um, so one of the things that is... Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, one of the things that robots cannot do is connect. And one of the things that the world needs is connection. Um, so I say that to say that there are a lot of skills um, and competencies that we as humans, you know, by virtue of how we are, yeah. you know, can thrive on, right? Um, so the World Economic Forum had uh, published the future, what the future would be in terms of the skills you should have for the future. Yeah. Um, and it was things like communication skills, interpersonal skills, you know, problem solving, critical thinking, emotional intelligence. emotional intelligence, and things like that. So for me, I think that what will be important is, regardless of your course of study, mm -hmm. you need to be thinking of how you're going to use that, you know, to help humanity, because we're still procreating. Mm -hmm. So 
in terms of the number of people, it's still going to increase. So yeah. while while the robots are going to be doing the monotonous work, which is not bad if you look at it, mm -hmm. it's just that because they're taking away jobs. Yeah. But I think it's just the creativity of how we then yeah. transfer our skills. Yeah. So it's about transferable skills, yeah. right? Um, and, and I feel like a core of that will be impacting your world, mm -hmm. right? And whatever that is, mm -hmm. you know? But I feel like as far as there's still humans on Earth, um, there's so many needs that we have, and the needs are changing, yeah. you know? And humans are changing yeah. as well. So it's just adaptation. Yeah. Um, Good work. But it still starts really mm. with self awareness mm. Mm. and knowing what role are you going to play in the changing mm. world. And I think that technology can be a huge um, uh, amplifier yeah. of that and enable yeah. of yeah. that. And it's just how, again, we use it to our advantage. Yeah. But I feel like all of us should be building those skills mm. and competencies that are important for the future. Yeah world yeah um, which will determine the future of work yeah fantastic yeah. great response I like it Madam President <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but um, you know on that having sort of shared such a bold statement in fact and, and good for you uh, what is your why what is your why so my why is very simple um, my motivation to be president is the singular fact that I believe, so while all the sectors mm -hmm. that I've worked across are amazing and play significant roles, I definitely think public sector um, has the capacity to create the greatest good um, through public policy, right? Um, one policy can change everything. Um, and I definitely think that the office of president will allow me to be able to facilitate those types of policies. So I definitely, in running, will not start as president. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I definitely intend to start as the legislature because I, I think that that's a very critical arm of government mm -hmm. and that a lot of work can be done mm -hmm. in there. But ultimately, the, the motivation and my why is that a great number of people can have access to That's really the motivation, to yeah. be honest. I, I just feel like, you know, so I've worked it, at, like I said, across sectors, and I feel like mm -hmm. you you have, so when I worked in development, right, you you are doing, I always felt like we're doing pilot projects. So you work in three states, you know, you have this project, so it's like a project, and then you end it, right? And then you go to private sector, I was doing corporate social responsibility and sustainability, yeah. Yeah. and of course, an, an organization that wants to work in an area, and we do good work. And so we're impacting people, thousands, maybe millions, because if you think about the trigger, but I'm talking about sustained, yeah. you know, um, change mm. and impact mm. and development. Mm. That is the reason to turn for government. And I, I definitely think that that's what we should be doing. Yeah. Actually providing public goods and services. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that's yeah. really what the motivation is. Yeah. No, great, that's a great one. Great one. Thank you so much. It's been fantastic having you with us today. Thank you so much. So I would like you to, let, let's send by you maybe sharing how people can get your book, how they can check in with you on uh, Instagram, Twitter, you know, if they want to find out more about you, reach yes. and, and connect with you, how can they do that? Okay, great. So I'm Abosede George Organ on Instagram, on Facebook, and then if you wanted to buy the book, please go to buildingaconsciouscareer.com.ng. So buildingaconsciouscareer.com.ng, and you can order the book. Great. Do you want to explain, how does the book Work for book. How does that yes. work for the book? So um, what had happened was after after people read the book, you know, it was really okay. So they read the book. It gives you a lot of tasks. Yeah. Um, but then the workbook makes you sort of do the tasks directly. Yeah. Um, instead of maybe going to your own notebook or sheet of paper to yeah. do that. Okay. And that was the idea. Um, also, the most common response from the book has been, I wish I read it when I was younger. Mm. 
And so we thought that a workbook would be easier for the younger people. Yeah. Um, so you're not doing as much reading, but also it's guiding you to the how. Cool. And that was all idea. Excellent. Good job. Good job. Um, thank you so much again. Thank you for it's having me. It's been a pleasure me. having you on the Time and Flora show. Thank you very where much. Where we talk, learn, and grow together. And we have talked, we have learned, and we, and we have we will grow. And we yeah. are growing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a Headway Point production, guys. Do, do, please go check uh, and see. Get one of these. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading mine. Thank Don't forget you. to sign it, by the way, before you leave. Definitely. And I think that we can end it there. Yes. All right. And we look forward to hearing more from you. Yes. A uh, great, great Shout future out. ahead for Thank all of you. us, right? Yes. Absolutely. So we'll say goodbye for now. Thank you for having right. me. You're Bye. <laughs>